Welcome back to Math 104. In a certain die rolling game, each time you play, you roll a pair of fair dice, and if the sum equals 8 on that roll, you win that roll. What is the probability of winning at least twice in five rolls of the dice? The point of this question, and the follow-up question about the probability of winning at most once in five rolls, is to emphasize that everything we learned earlier in the course about the rules of probability still apply. This event, winning at least twice in five rolls of the dice, can be described as two or three or four or five wins. The probability of two or three or four or five wins, we can compute. We can compute it as the sum probability of two wins plus probability of three wins plus probability of four wins plus probability of five wins. We can do that. Or we can say that this event, two or more wins, is the complement of an event that's easier to describe, namely zero or one wins. It's a bit less work to compute this, so let's do it that way. First, let's keep our algebraic wits about us and remember that there are parentheses here. The probability of zero or one wins is the probability of zero wins plus the probability of one win. All of that is in parentheses, and therefore the addition must be done before we subtract from 1. So we've got 1 minus, open brackets, 5 choose 0 times 5 over 36 to the 0. This is the same experiment where we've already figured out that the probability of a win on a single roll is 5 out of 36. So probability of a win raised to the 0 for 0 wins times the probability of a loss raised to the 5th power plus the probability of 1 win. That's 5 choose 1 times the probability of a win on a single roll raised to the first times probability of failure on a single roll raised to the fourth. 1 minus this whole sum is the probability that we're looking for. When we compute, this turns out to be approximately 1 minus 0.7365. That means that the 0.7365 is the sum of these two probabilities in brackets here. And therefore, the probability we're looking for, 1 minus that, is approximately 0.2635. The overall strategy here is actually an older strategy of ours from earlier in this course. What's new is how we compute these individual probabilities once we've boiled it down to them. The follow-up question asks, what is the probability of winning at most once in five rolls of the dice? And the good news is that we've already done all the work. This right here is the answer to our question. This 0.7365 equals the probability of zero wins or one win. This 0.7365 is exactly what we just computed to be the probability of zero wins or one win. The point of this follow-up question was that this event, winning at most once in five rolls of the dice, is complementary to the event in the previous question of winning at least twice in five rolls of the dice. The first time we stated the binomial probability model, we expressed it specifically in terms of shooting at a target. Since then, we've seen a number of examples, and we've introduced this terminology of Bernoulli trials. So let's restate the binomial probability model in a more general way. Consider any experiment consisting of a sequence of Bernoulli trials, each with the same probability of success that we're calling P, and each independent of the other trials. When n independent Bernoulli trials are performed, each with probability p of success, the probability of k successes in n trials equals n choose k times probability of success on a single trial raised to the power of the number of successes times probability of failure on a single trial raised to the number of failures. We can rewrite that in terms of the factorials if we wish, but the first way of writing it is perfectly fine. In order to understand this subject, it is very important that you should be able to explain the following. What is the role of p to the k, 1 minus p to the n minus k in this formula? And why is that being multiplied by n choose k? This p to the k times 1 minus p to the n minus k, we shouldn't forget what this means just because it's all letters and no numbers except for the 1. In every single example, this has meant the probability of k successes in n trials in one specific order. Once we have the probability of k successes in n trials in one specific order, then we have to add that number to itself a certain number of times, as many times as there are different orderings. 
That's why we multiply by the number of orderings, and the number of those orderings of k successes in n trials is exactly n choose k. That's what n choose k is for, to count the number of outcomes of an n stage experiment where k of the stages turn out one way and the remaining n minus k stages turn out the other way. It's important to understand this. Understanding this is the difference between just plugging numbers into the formula and really knowing why the formula works and why the formula makes sense.